all right hello welcome or welcome back to this channel and today i will be reviewing some books we'll start off with happy place by emily henry and for this book well it's a romance novel i'm gonna try to like not give so many spoilers uh yeah it's a romance novel it's the fake dating trope and i feel like i like this trope not my favorite but i definitely like it because i've seen it in like movies well new a recent movie anyone but you i liked it um also the proposal love that movie when i first watched it i think still holds up i should revisit that movie again and to all the boys i've loved i think on netflix um those are a few that i can think of um but i enjoyed those so i was like okay i'm excited to read this um but honestly not my favorite i would not read it again um the thing i was most excited about um okay first let me say like a little summary for you if anybody doesn't know what this book is about aside from the fake dating um so our main characters is harriet and Wynne, and they've been together since like college and they were like the it couple a lot of people thought that they were very good together like meant to be and they break up after years of being together but their friends don't know about it so they have like a little vacation home that they go to i think like every year and they're all going to meet up there and i i don't know if i should say why they decide to fake date there's there's just an there's an event that's going to happen and they kind of want it to be perfect um one thing i can say is this vacation home is going to be sold off so it's their last trip so once Harriet and Wynn find this out, they're like, okay, well, and for other reasons too, and they're like, we can't break the news now. Uh, so they try to make it look like they're still dating. Uh, so that's the reason. I felt like it was a solid enough reason as to why they're fake dating. So I was like, cool, like I, I, I was happy about that. And the thing I was most interested about reading this it wasn't so much about like the two characters Harriet and Wynne getting back together I honestly did not care which I think mm, might be an issue uh, but I just wanted to know why they broke up because within the book it kind of goes back and forth from present time to like flashbacks from when they were together and yes you're just getting, getting the author's giving you like little pieces of information right and so it's like building up and building up and I felt like it was just something so very simple the reason why they broke up which is honestly pretty realistic the reason why um, I'll say it in simple terms it was lack of communication if you want to find out more details you know check this out uh, but yeah and I, I think I did I like the book it's not my favorite but I liked it I wasn't like dreading it or anything like that and I like the character Harriet. I felt like I could relate to her, especially the way she handles like uncomfortable situations. Like for an example, two of her friends were arguing and she has this habit of trying to get in between them and resolve it and not let them resolve it. You know, she tries to fix the issue as soon as possible instead of letting it like ride out. And I know I've done that a lot in the past. And also, like the way she is within her relationship as well. I'm like, I, I can see myself a bit reflected on that too. And for Wen though, our other main character, like love interest, I honestly didn't really care about him that much. Like I wasn't really intrigued. Like, oh my God, I want to know more about him. Not really. Um, like he seemed like a nice enough guy, but that was about it. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing my notes if I have anything else I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, the whole thing I had mentioned it earlier about how the Harriet and Wen were like the it couple. A lot of like I don't know if a lot, 
but I feel like at characters definitely mention it, like, oh, you're meant to be together. And I feel like something that would have been nice to have been done in this book is instead of it just being said, for it to be shown. You know, because I think that's what was lacking for me, like, the whole chemistry between the two characters, or like, just, you know, rooting for them. And I feel like maybe if I would have seen more of the reasons why they're meant to be, I would have been more invested than just having, like, the friends saying, like, oh my god, but they're the love of your life. Don't let them go, kind of thing, you know? Um, yeah. Oh yeah, and I, I do have to confess, I did skim through certain parts of the book. Yeah, so... That always shows if I'm not invested, I feel like, if I decide to skim. I didn't skim too much, but I did a little bit. But my overall score for this book is a 3.2 out of 5 stars. Um, I think it's still a pretty good score. Uh, the book was, was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. And I would recommend this to somebody that loves romance, like rom especially romance novels. Oh my god, I'm so curious. If any of you are like readers of like romance novels and you've read this, let me know what you think. Because I haven't read that many romance novels, so I don't know how I feel about them. I just know like movies, like I love rom-coms. Yeah, so. Yeah, also if you have any recommendations for like romance books, comment down below. All right, so let's look up our next book. Okay, so our next book is Heartstopper, Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. And this one, I liked it. Um, but I feel like, honestly, it, it's good. Check it out. Especially if you're into the series. Check out Volume 5. But... I feel like I might be kind of over the series. Like, it was nice to revisit these characters. I was, like, very happy about that. And my favorite thing about this book, specifically Volume 5, is seeing Charlie really be more confident and not rely on Nick so much. He's kind of really coming to be his own person, which is lovely to see. And yeah, I really love the um, little concert show. Yeah, probably my favorite part of the, the book. And I also really liked seeing his conversation with Tori, which is his sister. And it honestly just made me more excited to check out Solitaire, which is another book by Alice Oseman and it follows Charlie's older sister. I already had that on my TBR and now I am even more excited to come to it soon. Read it. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, also, um, in case you didn't know, this is not the last volume. I thought it, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be. Like it was marketed as such but yeah the author says in the end of the book that it didn't all fit in this book so Heartstopper will conclude in volume six but let me even show you the page I when I read that my jaw dropped I'm not even exaggerating I'm serious here it is see that Yep. Crazy. Can't believe it. But, yeah, when volume 6 comes out, I will read it. Because I feel like I need I need to finish the series. I started it, okay? I'm this far along. Uh, yeah. But my score for it is a 3.1 out of 5 for volume 5. Yep. So we'll see how volume 6 is. In time, we shall see. <laughs> Next we have another graphic novel. This one is called Roaming by Jillian Tamaki and Mariko Tamaki. Sorry if I butchered those names. 
but this one is about a group of friends who are traveling to New York and they don't really get along on the trip. Yeah, so honestly I was excited about that, that like concept because I was like, oh I've never read a book like that and I'm like that's so true, like you won't get along with every single little traveling buddy you know on a trip. Everybody has very specific things they might want to do on a trip. Like there's people that like waking up really early and they're like, we got to, you know, really milk it. We got to get everything out of this trip, everything we can, you know, every little experience. Sleep? No, not here, not today. And there's other people that like to really relax, you know, go with the flow and yeah so obviously like those two people were like not mesh together so i was excited about this i was but well first let's start with the positives uh the artwork i enjoyed it i liked it with any graphic novel that is like one of the big things that i'm looking forward to and i feel like this one has a very unique style because this color scheme that you see on the poster on the cover <laughs> um, it's there throughout the whole book so I thought that was really cool it has a really like specific feel to it and yeah and also I really like seeing illustrations about like from New York um, New York City because I have never been myself so that was very cool yeah now something I didn't love was I personally felt like there wasn't really much character growth from these three characters and like maybe there was like very little though that was I guess I, I wanted something some more big change that was visible yeah because like the ending felt like a little bit different I don't want to give too much away but yeah, I don't know. I wanted more character growth. Also, I did not have a favorite character. Like, none of them really resonated with me. So, you know, whenever you feel like you connect with the character, I feel like it definitely makes you more invested in the book and the story. And that's what was lacking for me in this one. But, yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know, I don't really have too much to say about this, but I would say check this out if you, well, are somebody that likes graphic novels, no, I don't think you'll be disappointed by the artwork, um, also, if you just want like an easy read, yeah, why not, I don't regret reading it, I don't. But my score is um, a 2.5 out of 5 stars for roaming. Yeah, I mean, I did have high expectations just because I was really excited. So I don't know if that had something to do with it. But if you've read this book, comment down below and let me know what you think about it. How was your experience? Do you agree with anything I said? None of it. I don't know. Let me know. Uh, yeah. And also, well... If this is the last book I'm reviewing. So one of the books I read is Like Water for Chocolate by Laura es Esquirel. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, so this book, I enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't say I fell in love with it. But I was very... I, I would say invested throughout it. Uh, there was never really a boring moment. A lot of drama, if you are a fan of drama, it's, it very much reads like a soap opera. And also it has recipes. That's like the way it's formatted. It's like, I think you check in on them like once a month. And the beginning of every month, it'll say like the recipe. Like, look, I can show you. Let me find one. So look, right here, it says January Christmas Rolls, and then if you turn the page, this is literally chapter one, 
And then right here I'll list the ingredients for you. Which I think is really cool for like the reader if they want to try to do these recipes themselves. I think that's really cool. Um, but yeah, and also another thing, this book is heavy on like magical realism. Um, I think I might not be a, the biggest fan of magical realism. I think I prefer not to have it in my book that I'm reading, but it was still a, like a fun ride. I think the most craziest, one of the most craziest things, at least for me, um, like kind of spoiler but not really, um, is a chicken tornado <laughs> that happens in the book. And I really want to see the movie now to see how they pull that off. Like they better have included it. If I watch the movie and it's not there, I would be disappointed. Um, but yeah, let me see. Let me see my notes because it's been a while since I've read it. What's new um, in this channel, right? Um, let's see. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, I mentioned I one of the characters, Pedro. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of backstory for the book. Okay, so our main character is Tita, right here. I think in the beginning of the, of the story, she's like 15, I think. Um... But her family tradition is that the youngest daughter has to take care of her mom. Like, until the mom dies. The daughter is not allowed to have children or marry. And obviously Tita's not happy with this. And she is, like, in love with this guy named Pedro. Or Pedro, however you want to say it. And he... Okay, so, like, a little bit of spoiler... Um, I'll let you like skip ahead if you want, but it's not giving up way too much. Um, anyway, but he comes, he wants to like ask for her hand in marriage and the mom's like, he better not be coming over here to ask for your hand because it's pointless. Um, you can't marry anybody and... Yeah, he, he goes, I think, with his father. He's accompanied by his father. And, yeah, the mom tells him, like, the whole spiel. And she says, but I can offer you my other daughter's hand instead of Tita. And he agrees. In his mind, this is, this is romantic because he loves her so much. He'll marry her sister just to be near her. And honestly, I don't know, throughout the book, even in, I mean, in that moment, I was like, he's an idiot. He should have just, like, kept trying. Uh, or tried to escape with her. I don't know. Just my opinion. Um, but there's this other guy later on. Um, okay, yeah, I guess spoilers. And warning. <laughs> Alright, so this other guy, John, um, he's a doctor and he's older than Tita. I liked him more for Tita because he was more kind towards her he wasn't that much of an idiot honestly um but he's not my like i'm not the biggest fan of him either because like the age gap between him and tita and also the big fact that he knew her when she was a child and then all of a sudden like sees that she's all grown up and he's like hmm that's creepy I don't know. I don't know if you agree in the comments. I think it's creepy. And later on, his son, um, which is like six years old, um, maybe he's like seven by the time that Tita's niece is born, he basically looks at the baby and he's like, I want to marry her one day. And I thought, like father, like son. Mm -mm, nope. Alright, let's see, um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you have read this, if you were a bigger fan of John or of Pedro, yeah, I want to hear about it, um, yeah, I think that might be it for my notes, um, yeah, I didn't really have any, like, major quotes or anything from the book that stood out to me not with this one i think it was just like a fun time reading it uh just getting all that drama it's like a wild ride i think and 
Yeah, a crazy ending. I think it was crazy. But I recommend this book to anybody who loves or even likes cooking. I think there's something in it for you. Or if you like soap operas, <laughs> that is big in this one. Or magical realism. They're all they're all big themes or they're heavily represented in this book. So I'd recommend that to anybody that it has interest in any of those or all of those categories. This might be the book for you. Oh, my overall rating for it. It would be a 3.4 out of 5. Yeah. It felt right to me. I don't know. That score felt right. But, yeah. Have you read this? Let me know what you think about it. Just for this video. Well, thank you for watching. And, yeah. You know, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your recommendations. I love making that TBR bigger and bigger. Yeah. Alright, take care. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely night. Bye.